And we begin this hour with breaking news of a fire that has led to a SIG alert in Logan Heights. It started at 5 this morning on National Avenue. This is just north of the 5. The fire started in a shed and then it spread to the studio. So you can see fire crews are out there. It looks like they've got the flames out at this point, but still a lot of smoke kind of billowing in the area. Uh, no one was hurt here, so that's the good news to report. Uh, but you can expect some extra traffic delays over the next hour because of that. Thanks so much for joining us here at 6 a.m. I'm Eric Connert. And I'm Heather Myers. And again, those temperatures today, as far as your Tuesday is concerned, pretty comfy. How long will this weather pattern last? We're going to talk about that coming up. But Eric, it is Tuesday, and we're going to take it away with the headlines this morning. Yeah, and let's start with this big day in the push for law enforcement reform here in our county. Supervisors expected to vote on a number of proposals. News 8's Ned Aranpour is live along the Embarcadero now with a closer look. A lot at stake here, a lot to discuss this morning, Netta. Yeah, good morning. So Supervisor Nathan Fletcher really behind these three different initiatives that they'll be looking at today. County Board of Supervisors meeting will start at 9 a.m. and it'll be Zoom style the way they've been doing the past several meetings. But yes, they'll be looking at three separate proposals, all talking about police reform. And as many of you know, law enforcement has become under heavy scrutiny across the country with hundreds of thousands of people protesting for reform. And right now, County Supervisor Nathan Fletcher, he drafted three new initiatives. So we want to break those down for you. The first initiative, including having more oversight of the county's sheriff's office by strengthening the Citizens Law Enforcement Review Board. He says they need to increase funding to ensure they have the investigators and staffing they need for independent and true citizen led oversight. The second initiative to start an office of equity and racial justice for the county and the final one to launch mobile crisis response teams without having to request sheriff's deputies or police officers to be first on scene for certain calls so people would have another number to call for help. Specifically, that plan would include a non-police team to respond to non-violent mental health calls. They say a lot of times police officers can add to the stressors when it comes to mental health, so they want to work on that de-escalation instead. One outspoken activist does say these proposals are tone deaf. Reverend Shane Harris, the founder of People's Alliance for Justice, says there was not enough community input into Supervisor Fletcher's proposals. He sent a letter to the district attorney calling for stronger reform. You don't create commissions for a department in government to oversee a commission. You create commissions to provide oversight of the government. And Fletcher's director of community engagement did release a response to Harris saying in part we are always open to and welcome to constructive suggestions to strengthen our policies. Harris with the support of other civil rights leaders sent a letter to District Attorney Summer Seppin outlining his own reform. He's calling for accountability tactics oversight and to open an independent unit in the prosecutor's office. So again a lot of this will be uh, held before the County Board of Supervisors voting today starting at 9 a.m. They'll be able to discuss each of these proposals. It's not one package deal. They'll vote on each one individually. That's the latest live in front of the county building. We'll send it back to you. And police reform also a top priority for San Diego City leaders. So today, council members are scheduled to vote on moving forward with a new measure on the November ballot. It would create an independent commission on police practices. The measure would significantly impact how an officer's actions are reviewed. That meeting starts this morning at 9 o'clock. La Mesa is also looking at putting a similar measure up for a vote this November. Of course, this is a community that's become a focal point of protests over the past month. Later today, council members will consider a plan to create a police oversight commission. The meeting will begin tonight at 6 at La Mesa City Council Chambers. Well, now to the latest on the coronavirus right here in San Diego. Hundreds of new confirmed cases over the last week is causing some concern in our county. There are now 302 new cases reported, which is the second highest increase since the pandemic began. The largest was yesterday with 310 reported cases. The sudden spikes pushed the total number to just over 11,000 total. This is county leaders are keeping an eye on 10 community outbreaks. That's the most in any week span yet. So could could we see some changes in our county due to the recent jump in coronavirus cases? Well, News 8's Chris Grow is live in Lemon Grove this morning, and that's one of the areas that is seeing an increase. Chris? 
Good morning, Heather. And another cause for concern here, according to the county, is the positive case rate. Yesterday, we were told that it was reported at about a 5% uh, positive case rate there on Monday. And on Sunday, we saw that 7% positive case rate reported. Now, the reason why that's important is because the rolling 14-day average is at about 2.9%. Now, in fact, when you look closer at the numbers, the most populous cities have added the most number of raw cases over the past week. That's going to be expected. But the numbers were well below their average rate of increase for the rest of the county. This is the concern, though. Fallbrook reported a 43% spike in cases from Saturday to Saturday in that one-week period. And that's where you have Lemon Grove, Solana Beach, and others rounding out those top five cities with the largest percentage of increase. Now, it's important to note this is all happening as testing is up significantly. Much of the data last week came from batches of old negative results filtering down to the county. So that means the percentage positive positive was likely trending slightly up over those last few days until it reached that 7% level. Now, we don't know how serious the latest cases are until we see those hospitalization numbers. And as the county said, those will normally lag behind confirmed cases. But what we do know is that many of the newly infected are under the age of 40. Still, the county is imploring everyone to do what they can to take precautions, to wear a mask, and to practice social distancing. The dangers from coronavirus are real. They are present, and we continue to implore the public to please heed the warnings and advice. And when we were talking about those 10 community outbreaks, remember the county yesterday said they identified three additional community outbreaks. Well, that number is going to drop down to seven later today because three previously discovered community outbreaks are going to fall out of the county's seven-day trigger window. Uh, so again, we will continue to be getting updates from the county, including later today when the latest numbers are published. Back to you. Chris, thanks, and we apologize for the language used by the person behind Chris's live shot there. But we want to get you to your morning rush here this morning. The man accused of shooting at sheriff's deputies in Lakeside during a standoff earlier this month is in court today. The standoff happened on June 14th when deputies said they got a call of an armed man who barricaded himself inside of a home. This was on High Ridge Road west of the 67. That's when investigators say Dustin Banzoff shot at the deputies and gunfire was exchanged. No one was hurt. Arraignment is scheduled this morning at 11 a.m. A not guilty plea from the man accused of intentionally driving his truck off Sunset Cliffs with his twin daughters on his lap. He appeared in court yesterday. Robert Bryans is facing attempted murder, kidnapping and other charges. The crash happened on June 13th. His two daughters were hospitalized in stable condition. The 47-year-old father is being held without bail and is due back in court next month. Today, the San Diego Unified Board of Education will vote on a resolution recognizing Juneteenth as a holiday. Under the resolution, the district calls on educators to teach the importance of Juneteenth and current movements such as Black Lives Matter that advance liberation efforts for the black community throughout the year. It comes just a day after district officials raise the Black Lives Matter flag along with the pride and transgender flags at the district headquarters. This year's Miramar Air Show has now been canceled due to the pandemic. The air show had been scheduled for September and billed as the largest military air show in the world. Typically draws about half a million spectators. Military officials say they are now beginning early planning for next year's show. New this morning, the Chula Vista Starlight Parade will now be postponed until December of 2021. The event announced on Facebook yesterday that they made the decision based on the COVID-19 health crisis. They said the safety of residents, participants, vendors, and employees is most important at this time. Heather? Well, today a funeral is expected to be held for 27-year-old Rayshard Brooks. He was the man fatally shot in Atlanta after grabbing a police officer's weapon during a confrontation. Both of those officers now, though, face criminal charges. But as Laura Podesta reports, that decision is getting some pushback. People lined up to pay their respects to Rayshard Brooks yesterday at the Atlanta church where Martin Luther King Jr. once preached. A private funeral will be held today. The 27-year-old father was killed June 12th outside of Wendy's. Atlanta police officer Garrett Rolfe has been fired and charged with 11 counts, including felony murder. Another officer was suspended and faces lesser charges. We do the job to protect 
we expect to be protected by our leaders. A crowd gathered at the Atlanta police headquarters over the weekend as the Atlanta police union called for a special prosecutor to handle the case. Some Georgia lawmakers say the local DA rushed to judgment by charging the officers. You cannot prosecute cases until the investigation is over. It's been one month since George Floyd was killed in police custody, sparking national and international outrage. In his first interview set to air today on CBS This Morning, the head of the Minneapolis Police Union spoke with Gail King. Are you all saying to us that if you, would, you can't really make a comment about this case, until you see every piece of video associated with it? Is that what you're saying today? We would just like to see what we are entitled to in our agreement, in our policy, is our officer's body camera footage. It may shed some light that we're unaware of. As for the Atlanta police officer accused of shooting and killing Rayshard Brooks, he was supposed to be in court today for a bond hearing. But late yesterday, that hearing was postponed. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Well, still to come, the former National Security Advisor's new book is set to be released today, and it comes as the president is now heading to Arizona to take a look at the border wall and also hold another campaign rally. What you need to know straight ahead. Also this, in an act of solidarity, a march for Bubba Wallace took place before the Talladega NASCAR race. We'll tell you what he had to say about the show of support.